Good morning, everyone. So thank you, Andre, for giving, giving the opportunity to um, talk about how we use uh, the two-door uh, nanotubes in, in our products. Um, so uh, Armor is a coating partner for Oxia. And just to be, um, to be very clear, so we are not in all the compound-based product uh, business. Um, we are in all the businesses which are related to films, to foils. Um, so you've heard about the tuba foil product for the battery, so we'll talk a bit further about that. Uh, but we are also in the tuba paper product, which is a film, again, it's a roll. And clearly, uh, to make it clear in the value chain, uh, we don't do the dispersion. So we take, uh, so Oxial is doing the nanotubes. Uh, some companies like Langsess, like, uh, like uh, East Chain are doing the dispersion. And we take this dispersion, then we do some inks, because for coating, you don't take directly the dispersions, you, you have to do some formulation. So we do the inks, and we coat the inks on substrates. So for the battery, it's uh, either on copper, or it's on, on, the, um, on the aluminium. Uh, and for two paper, it's on PET films. That's where we are. Um, just a few words about Armor. So we are a middle-sized company, $285 million uh, dollars, uh, of, of revenue, uh, with manufacturing facilities in Europe, US, uh, and, uh, in, and in Asia. Um, and we are experts in formulation and high precision coating. Just to give you an idea, we coat 1.3 billion uh, square meters uh, per year. So these are big, big machines uh, working at very high speed. process, uh, we don't, uh, as you understand, we don't do synthesize any uh, chemical products, but we are very, very sharp in characterization of, uh, of raw materials like the one from, from Oxia. Then we do the mixing, milling, the coating, uh, drying and slitting. These are our processes, our, our core processes. I'm not going to go into too many details, but just to explain you that, that in each of these processes there are different techniques and we, uh, we are um, Doing, we are using different techniques depending on the slurry that we want to, uh, we want to, to, to achieve. Um, back to what we are doing now with, uh, with Oxial. Um, what happened is that, in fact, Oxial came to us in, um, that was last year, in September 2016. And at that time, in fact, um, they, they were sampling some, manufacturer, some, um, some customers uh, with um, sheet samples. You know, in the film industry, usually you start with sheet samples, they are this size. Um, and then you produce some uh, test rolls, a few hundreds of meters of test rolls, and then when you're in the real life, in industrial phases, in commercial phases, you produce rolls which are typically 6,000 meters or 3,000 meters, depending on applications. And at that time, so they were uh, sampling customers with, uh, with test sheets, and they were looking for a partner capable to do some rolls. 
uh, same roles every time, so with the repeatability, uh, with the quality standard, which, are, which is the one expected by uh, a battery manufacturer. And you know that in the battery industry, there's of course a safety issue. Uh, so, so when you code something, it's very important that it's high quality, it's, uh, it's exactly, it's uniformly um, uh, coated, uh, there are no pinholes, and uh, all these kind of aspects are extremely important. So that's what happened when they came to us. Um, and basically, uh, we spent the three first months uh, to, uh, to handle this uh, discussion from Lanxess because it was quite different from the, the raw materials uh, that we are using typically, uh, black carbons, graphites, uh, uh, multiple uh, carbon nanotubes. Um, so after three months of industrialization, we were capable to, uh, to, um, to coat uh, rolls, but only test rolls, a couple of hundred of meters, and then it took another three months uh, to be capable to, uh, to build some real commercial products, uh, 6,000 meter products. And now we are in commercial phases where these products are available, um, and they are marketed under the brand name of Tubal Foil, when it's marketed by uh, Oxial, and it's uh, marketed under the name of, of NC200. Uh, when it's marketed by, um, by Armour. Um, so what are the mutual benefits? Uh, you remember yesterday, uh, Hugues, the CEO of uh, Uget said in this world, it's a complicated world and battery is complicated, um, you cannot do everything by yourself. Uh, you have to build, if you want to be successful, you have to build an ecosystem around your product, around your raw material, around your uh, know-how. And that's um, exactly what's happening uh, between Oxia and Armour. Um, point number one, high performance products. Um, we are not doing some uh, basic products together with Oxial. We use state-of-the-art state raw materials, these nanotubes. Okay? Um, they know tuba, uh, sorry, Oxia knows how to do this. We don't know, we don't know how to do tuba, uh, nanotubes. And we know the, as far as Armour is concerned, we know how to characterize these nanotubes and to formulate them in a ink which goes on the foil. Very complementary. Um, in marketing, uh, for the marketing part, we have two strong brands. Tubal now is a, is a very strong brand. Everybody starts start hearing about uh, Tubal. There are a lot of articles. And NSAFE is as well a strong brand. Um, and we have uh, Salesforce uh, worldwide uh, within Oxia and within, within Armour. Um, in terms of scale up, I think it was quite a great success to be capable to scale up uh, in less than six months. That's what we've done now for, uh, for Tubal Foil. Um, that was thanks to our, our industrial expertise. That's, we've been doing this kind of formulation and coating for the past 90 years. So we have a lot of techniques and a lot of experience. And uh, I would say the last point is that when you deal with um, products like tubal foil or like tubal paper, uh, the customers um, usually are large organizations, uh, industrial partners. Um, they, they are, their manufacturing activity, uh, you know, they cost a, a couple of hundreds of uh, millions of dollars. And um, sometimes they, um, you know, they, they don't want to work with startups. When they work with you, it's because you are, uh, yeah, you, you have the same DNA like them. Uh, you are industrial, you are capable to uh, produce not only a couple of hundreds of, uh, of square meters, but millions of square meters, because that's what they're gonna need. Uh, so I think it's very important as well for uh, Oxial when they promote their product, uh, to have partners who are capable to show uh, the big cooking machines and uh, to show uh, manufacturing facilities which are capable uh, to produce uh, millions of square meters. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know that within Armour, uh, we have different business units and we are clearly interested in, um, in these tubal nanotubes, uh, not only for the battery applications, uh, but also in some of our products. Um, I would say, take one example, for instance, we are doing uh, organic photovoltaic films and in this film at the moment we are using uh, nano silvers uh, and there's, uh, we are doing some R&D at the moment and see how we could replace maybe these nano silvers, nano silvers uh, 
uh, with, uh, with carbon energies. <coughs> Uh, we are also a uh, world leader in thermal transfer. Thermal transfer is, uh, is a technique, these are the films for um, uh, industrial printing, you know the barcodes, all the barcodes that you see on, on products. Um, and uh, some of our customers, so normally you, in barcodes you use inks, uh, but the only properties that you need is black, you know, the, the color of black. And, and there are some niche applications but which could become big. Uh, where people in these barcodes, in fact, they would uh, ask for conductive inks. Uh, so with very little quantity of nanotubes, uh, we could uh, probably provide these uh, conductive inks. So it's clearly something that we are working on. Um, that's for our product for portfolio. And back, in fact, to our expertise and maybe some new products that uh, are um, Oxial uh, and you guys in this room are um, having in mind. Uh, back to our expertise in formulation and, and coating, in fact, um, you see that within less than six months we can uh, bring a product from an R&D level to a real commercial product. Um, we can coat multi-layer, that's something we do in all our products. We can go to on, on substrates like PET, copper, uh, titan, uh, uh, aluminium, whatsoever. Uh, we just need some specs about the thickness, about the, uh, the length and the, and the width, um, and that's uh, what we bring um, on the table. Thank you, Terry. So please give a round of applause to the <coughs> background. Thank you for the great explanation of what we are doing in terms of tube of all business, in terms of and safe business, and yes. uh, basically where the product can be applied. Personally, I have a question. So you explained in details about the process, yeah, but uh, a little bit about the actual application of tube of oil and commercialization status. Sure. Can you please elaborate on that a little bit? Like so maybe back to the question that you asked uh, earlier, right. uh, the benefits of, uh, of these prime uh, current vehicles. So, um, uh, until a couple of years ago, like uh, maybe three or four years ago, uh, in the battery industry, everybody was using uh, bare aluminum foils and bare copper foils. Nobody would think about prime copper foil because the products available on the market were not so good, they had a, a, a high resistance, and, um, and, and so nobody was really using it. And now there's a huge trend in the market. Uh, I would say all the Chinese suppliers in LFP, uh, in, uh, LFP is one of the technology for the, for the cathode, have moved to prime current collectors because there are some prime current collectors today uh, available which are high quality and which in fact have three properties. First property is you, you reduce the internal resistance, so the uh, electrical resistance. Second one, you improve the adhesion addition of the slurry on the chopper or the slurry on the, um, on the aluminum. And the third one as well, uh, you can provide a chemical barrier against corrosion. And in the market, most peop people now uh, tend to, uh, to put some additives in the electrolytes or additives in the, uh, in the cathode or in the anode, uh, which, uh, which have a consequence on the corrosion of the aluminum. And then you need a, a, a protective uh, barrier. On the copper, you ask a question on the copper, so for uh, a standard graphite, in fact in the anode, uh, so far most people were using standard graphite. Graphite on the copper, I mean the adhesion is quite good, you don't really need this kind of prime term collectors. Uh, but people, people are moving from graphite to silicone, uh, and when they use silicone, uh, the, the adhesion is not so good, and we see uh, more and more requests from customers uh, who are looking for a bit better addition of the anode on the copper and they, they, they are asking for uh, uh, prime current characters like, uh, like the triple form. So I would say on the cathode side it's uh, mainly because of using uh, some uh, new additives which can uh, have some corrosion and on the, cat on the anode side uh, it's about uh, getting a better addition. These are uh, some kind of drivers. Interesting. And uh, have you compared the like, adhesion results of uh, tubal foil or NSAFE product with uh, carbon primed uh, coatings? Yes, we do. So, uh, within at Armour, we, we are strong believers that um, 
In fact, one single product doesn't match all needs in this market because uh, battery manufacturers have uh, very different slurries, they have very different um, processes, and uh, one product cannot fit all needs. Now, clearly, uh, Tubal foil is part of our, uh, is within our, uh, our product range. Uh, we have seven grades today, and it's probably one of the most pro promising uh, product in this product range. Uh, clearly, uh, the, the thickness of the primer is only a couple of nanometers instead of one microns, typically. Uh, so it's, I mean, battery manufacturers always try to, it's passive components in, in a battery. Uh, so you prefer to have some active materials rather than passive uh, materials. So when you add a primer, a primer, uh, you prefer to have a couple of nanometers uh, rather than one microns. So, uh, so clearly if it does the job, you prefer to have something like, uh, like uh, a couple of nanometers. So tubal foil is, uh, at the moment, um, there are something like 15 customers in uh, North America and Europe who are testing uh, the tubal foil. So it's, I'm combining the, the leads from uh, Oxial and Anamor. It takes time because uh, the battery manufacturers are cycling, so it takes a lot of time. Um, but it's very promising. The feedback we have is, uh, is very promising. And there's a, the trend on the market to, uh, to, to move to uh, prime gun collectors. So we are very optimistic. And what's happening in China? Maybe Dr. Lee from BAK can comment about actually whether the companies are using some primed current collectors at the moment. Yes, if yes, then in which applications? Um, so far we only found that, uh, as he said, the LFP market, they, they strongly use uh, primary coating, uh, aluminum foil. But uh, for our NMC and uh, graphite, again, as you said, graphite, they don't help. Uh, we did lots of experiments on this uh, coating, but we, we don't find so far any better advantage of uh, this coating for AMC and uh, graphite. Uh, for silicone, we also tried so far, no good results. So I think that's still maybe due to the, um, the internal resistance, as you said. Since you have already a coating on the current track, then you apply the silicone. If you still cannot solve the internal resistance between this coating and the, the, the grab, uh, silicone anode, then it still won't help. So I think that's due to our uh, uh, dispersion problem, not due to itself, but the, the coating itself. So we need to work with the suppliers, let's say, the, the coating suppliers, how to solve this problem. And uh, for NMC, as you said... Uh, but uh, NMC is... Uh, sorry, maybe one, one precision. NMC 111, which is uh, the, most, no, actually, the most common today, it, it's, it's like graphite, there's no benefit. Yeah. We see now, uh, it's a bit uh, newer, but uh, NMC 532 and 611, uh, there is... Sorry, 622, yeah. <laughs> 622, uh, there is a clear benefit. Benefit. So if you've done some tests in uh, an MC111 uh, uh, and you didn't find any benefit, it's, it's, it's quite normal. Sorry, sorry. But, uh, actually, for MC111, almost no people in China use it because it's low energy density. Mm -hmm. So uh, for us, we use uh, MC811 or high uh, MC8. So as you said, we, if you have this primer coating, they have a strong uh, we can be against the corrosion, right? Mm -hmm. So I suppose this corrosion comes from the HF, from the electrode. I don't know <coughs> what you are talking about this corrosion. Due to the acid corrosion. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you use some salts, uh, mm -hmm. like LEKFSI, yeah. LEKFSI means that it has no HF emission, uh, uh, mm -hmm. then it's, it's absolutely mandatory to have a protection because there is corrosion on the aluminum. So, so you mean you, if you have a TFSI salt, yeah. then if you have a primer coating, because we know the TFSI has some corrosion on aluminum. So yeah. you mean if you use this salt, then this primer coating is helpful, right? Yes. So it's, it's this, this prime current collector is an enabler, you know? Mm -hmm. It's an enabler of using some uh, LETFSI salts or other kind of corrosive additives in, in your um, in your right. 
Okay, so actually it's not against the LHF, the hydrofluoride with acid corrosion. It's due to against the TFSI corrosion, right? Yes. Okay, so but then if you don't use TFS, then it's it doesn't help. Well, it's so corrosion is one one aspect clearly. Yeah. It's a clear aspect, and it's uh, it's not a nice to have. It's a must have. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, what we've seen as well is that in uh, NMC uh, so six two two and eight one one, when where well, first you try to do some nickel rich cathodes, right. and you try as well to in in increase uh, the potential. Mm -hmm. Uh, high potential, uh, and when you combine high nickel, nickel rich plus high potential, mm -hmm. then uh, there's um, the benefit is here. So, <laughs> but uh, again, for high nickel content, let's see, what high potential you are talking about? 4.2 or 4.3? 4.3. 4.3, that's. Uh, we think that it's dangerous for EV batteries as long as you increase the, the voltage, the, the higher safety problem happens. Yeah. So far, we still control to 4.2, right? especially for better cycling performance. Because at 4.2 volts, that's, that should be a reversible phase trans transition for the high nickel material. So we don't wish to charge our battery to, to 4.2. Mm -hmm. That's why for Tesla. Uh, their cycle performance, they control their battery to charge uh, to charge only to around 4.1 because they know there will be a, a, a reversible phase trans transition for the material. So that's my comment. I mean, so far, it's uh, not good to charge to high potential. Mm. Or high step level. by step. Yeah. I mean, right. a couple of years ago, nobody would think you would operate at 4.2. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, and every 0.1 digit is important and can cause a lot of, uh, so, of casualties. So, for higher potential, as you are talking about, yeah. what reaction will happen? I mean, for corrosion, or what corrosion happen? Well, it's not. It's not only corrosion. It, well, then I'm not a technical expert. <laughs> I just have some some uh, overview from my technical team. Okay. Uh, but it's a combination of adhesion. Adhesion, corrosion, and, and electrical yeah, resistance. What do you mean adhesion? You know, the adhesion of the slurry on the, on the current oh, connector. Okay. And that's um, it's, it, it's something which is quite interesting because at T0, when you do the first test, you don't see a lot of difference between the, uh, when you use a bare aluminum foil or when you use a, a prime current collector. Mm -hmm. and, and it's when, when you cycle or when you do accelerated aging, Mm -hmm. Then you see a, a significant difference. Okay. So, do you think it will be beneficial for this primer for reduce the corrosion from the uh, 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 high pH of MC? Because we know MC may have a high pH yeah. number, something like above, around 12. So, which means the base can corrode the, the foil, I, I suppose. So, will this primer be beneficial? Yes, and that's the reason why, in fact, uh, as I said uh, earlier, in fact, we don't have one single primer. We have a product range with different grades. Mm -hmm. And if you want a protection against pH 12, pH 13, we've been up to pH 13. Mm -hmm. uh, we have solutions for that. And tubal, I mean, the tubal foil, the one with a carbon tube is one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And what about applications in annals uh, of carbon primed? Current collectors. As far as I know, maybe you can correct. Like for high performance electronics, 3C market, like CATL, Samsung uses some carbon primed uh, copper foil. Mm -hmm. So, what is your knowledge about about this application? For the anodes. Yes, for the anodes. Um, for anodes, as I said before, we don't find any benefit of these primers. So, so as I said, maybe that's due to our uh, uh, mixing and uh, this coating our slurry onto this primer. But is it used uh, somewhere like carbon coated copper foils? For in our consumer? 3C battery and the EV, no, so far. In, in not China, no, yes? Uh, in China, I don't know for sure. As you said, maybe CATL they use, but in PAK we don't use because we don't find any benefit. Okay, 
clear. So you are speaking about BEK, yeah. yeah. All yeah. The, I've tried to get general information. General, general information, yeah. you know, uh, three years ago, nobody was asking anything on copper. As far as we are concerned, and, you yeah. know, we see we demand from, from, from many different places. And now I would say, uh, out of ten demands, nine are on aluminium and one is on copper. And it's the, the path on, on copper is increasing. We have the same information, maybe Jerry can comment here, Jerry Wang, our sales manager for China. So, yeah, just a short comment about the application of well, prime current collectors on the anode cathode side. What is the market? Yeah, now in 2014, yeah, people start to use uh, the carbon coated aluminum. And uh, because uh, not only the adhesion, but because of the, the particle size of the FP are mm -hmm. nanometers very small. Mm -hmm. So the adhesion between, uh, maybe they use a lot of binary inside. And uh, they also, because the particles, the resistance are very high. So they need some uh, good adhesion, uh, can improve the adhesion of the coating layer and the uh, laminar, and also can decrease the uh, contact resistance on this product. So it, uh, uh, in 2015 and uh, last year, 2016, it was widely used. But because now this year it changed uh, because the new energy density required by the government. So the CM now are very more popular. So in, as Dr. Ming said, uh, for NCM, you know, for uh, carbon coated aluminum, it, it seems the market decreased a lot this year. But uh, for uh, carbon coated uh, copper, for instance, they say it's risky and uh, in some power battery, they want to get very special performance. So they are testing, they are not use, using it. They are testing, want to get, to get the uh, higher mm -hmm. no. charge, no. Higher, no. Uh, higher discharge. And adhesion, right? Fast charging. Yeah, fast charge. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to have any resistance when you do fast charging and, and uh, I have And some yeah. special low temperature. Yeah, they want to achieve this. Right. Oh, so they are testing. Okay, so you see trend in, uh, in using such type of products on the anode side more than on the cathode side, right? Yeah. No, no, it will never be more than that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, but it's, you have to be, I mean, you have to be, uh, I mean, China market is, is clear. I mean, there was no demand on NLP, then suddenly everybody in LFP moved to these prime current collectors and uh, everybody doing LFP, small particles LFP are using prime current collectors. Now China is moving to NMC. Yeah. At the moment, I don't think that NMC in China is using uh, prime current collectors, but elsewhere in the world I'm telling you there are. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that the same thing will happen in China like it happened in LFP. Five years ago in LFP in China, nobody was using prime current collectors. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that at the moment when you start a new uh, uh, a new uh, technology, I mean the prime current collectors is not your first issue. Yeah. I think in China at the moment, all the guys who are moving from LFP to NMC, they have so many, I mean they are working on the slurry, they are working on the active materials, and there are so many things to solve. The way you process NMC cathodes is not the same the way you process LFP, so it's not their priority. I don't think that the current collectors is not it's their priority. I, I mean, tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong. There are so many more important things to, to solve. Then once this is stabilized, I don't think by any chance that the one doing NMC 111 will move to prime current characters, but the one who are doing a, a, a nickel rich, one day or another, maybe not all of them, but they will move. I mean, it's not, it's, it, it's, it's, it's what's happening elsewhere. Right. A very nice point to bring a high performance energy storage device or battery limiting all the parts. Now we are, of course, the focus is, is not on the current Because our business is, is this prime current collectors, but you have to, I mean, I mean, of course it's only one part of the, uh, of the battery and the, the most important one is first the active material. <laughs> yeah. We have more questions, yes. Three, I think we can sit, continue from that. Yeah, we've been standing for a long time. Yeah, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, just a question. I, I believe that the current collectors, aluminum and copper, represent a quite important part of the price of the battery? No, it's 1%, it's 1 to 3%. In the value, in the okay. uh, a bit of material, uh, it's the, the prime current, the current collector is 1 to 3%. Okay. So it's 
important, not important. <laughs> Every single penny is important, but uh, but no, it's not the biggest part. The the biggest, the most expensive part is the cathode, active material. Two more questions, Stefan. Do you see a big difference if you use the multi wall or the single wall nanotubes in the possibility of the coating? Yes, uh, well, in terms of performance, I mean, coating multi wall or coating a single wall, I mean, it's, you can do both. Um, but clearly, we tested some multi wall and we were not so happy uh, with multi wall compared to what we are already using graphites and, and, uh, and carbon, and sorry, uh, black carbons. Yeah. And we, what, you, what is important as well, in fact, um, that's the reason why we have different grades and we, we try, um, is that we, we think that uh, the, the best series are the ones where you mix different things. In, in a lot of our formulations, we don't only use black carbon or we don't only use uh, graphite, we use a mix. And so far, uh, so so far we were a bit disappointed with multi wall. It doesn't mean that we will not, never use multi wall, but we didn't see any real benefit compared to graphite and, and carbon black. So far, we, we are using uh, single wall. The one that we've done with uh, Oxial is, is a pure single wall nanotube. So we only work on the binding systems, but the conductive particles are only single walls. And we have in mind maybe some evolutions where there could be a combination of single walls together with black carbons or together with a little uh, graphite or... So that's something which is interesting. Yeah, you had a question. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, thanks for the presentation. Uh, yeah. My understanding is the thickness of this coating is significantly less than yes. some of the other primer coatings. Is that appreciated by the market? Does it provide advantages? I know when the development of this foil there was an idea that maybe you could weld through this, that machine vision could see through, we wouldn't have to use that before you masking on the coating. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what, what the uh, battery manufacturers are looking first is to, uh, to solve a problem, like uh, electrical mm -hmm. resistance or to solve uh, corrosion issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, if they have the choice for the same, same functionality, you know, okay, I've solved my problem. If I had a choice between a, a very thin one, like the, like, like the tubal foil one, which is only nanometers, compared to a, a black carbon based one, which is one, one microns, mm -hmm. they would clearly go for the oxyl one. Okay. Uh, because you say one microns, and one microns that we will replace with active materials. But first, you have to solve the problem, the issue which is uh, electrical resistance or coercion or addition. Mm -hmm. You see, it's not, they, they, they will not move it uh, only because it's, it's thinner. Okay. They will first have their problem solved, and when they are solved, if they have the choice between A and B, they will chase. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No more questions about tubal foil prime color correctors. Thank you very much Thanks. for the presentation. Yes, sir. Continue. Thank you.